question number 27 a b c and d are metals then we have to consider the position a, a b c and d are metals then we have to consider about the position of these metals in the electrochemical series so position of the electrochemical series in these elements so electrochemical series is organized according to their reducing power reducing power reducing power means reducing power means ability to ability to oxidize me reducing power means ability to oxi oxidize ability to oxidize high ability to oxidize means they are active metals active metals so in the electrochemical series the reducing power or the ability to oxidize so oxidizing ability is uh, increasing from bottom to up so the question says only a and c react with dilute hcl from h2 dilute hcl contains h plus so h plus is reduced into h2 plus one reduced into zero oxidation number so this this is done by only a and only a and c make. therefore in the electrochemical series if the position of hydrogen is here uh, uh, position of a and c metals are they are and other two b and d are reactive elements uh, than hydrogen hydrogen is there b and d is there position of b and d is there because producing ability is uh, higher in only a and c so according to that the high producing ability has both a and c they are both uh, answer is one or three A, B, B, A, and C O. B, B, C, A. Okay, B, B, C, A. Then we have to differentiate. Uh, actually, who has the highest reducing ability between A and C? Then the second point says, then. C is added to a solution containing ions of A, B, C. So the A, B, and D. Uh, we take uh, this A plus, B plus, and D plus. Then what happens? These all ions are replaced by C. That means activity of C is higher than these three. Especially activity of C is higher than higher than A. Therefore, activity is Activity in A is higher than C. Therefore, answer should be number 3. So, further, it says when D is added to a solution, when D is added to a solution of B, then B is replaced with B is highly active than B. That means it can be uh, reduce others more easily than B. That means B should be higher than B, therefore, again, answer is number 3. Uh, 28, so it is somewhat uh, hard question. Hard question, but you have to uh, have an idea about the overall syllabus. Here, uh, an iron plate is there. Iron plate is iron plate is immersed in a copper sulfate copper sulfate solution. So copper sulfate solution. Okay, this is an this is iron plate. This is an iron plate. So iron plate initial mass first forty grams. Then uh, what about the final uh, mass? After some time, the mass of the mass of plate was 42, 42 grams. Here, two processes are happening. Uh, you can compare iron and copper according to the electrochemical series. You know, actually, iron is highly active. It can be oxidized than copper. Therefore, always 
If E is oxidizing to Fp2 plus then two electrons, copper is copper 2 plus ions are reduced into copper. Both processes are happening. Therefore, we can write the overall reaction as Fe plus copper 2 plus Fp2 plus N copper. So, according to this, stoichial metric coefficient is 1 to 1. Then what happened? Once uh, iron is actually corrosion is there and corrosion is there. When one mole of according to stoichiometric ratio, one mole of Fe is dissociated and one mole of copper is deposited. So by uh, using these two processes, we can take uh, 40. 42, 42 means 2 grams difference. 2 grams uh, mass difference is created by both Fe dissociation and copper deposition. Okay. 1 mole of AFE. 1 mole of One mole of iron is dissociated and one mole of copper is deposited. Then what happened? We can take the masses. We can we have to compare the masses. Therefore, we can compare the molar masses. So molar mass is the mass for one mole of any compound. So here, molar mass of iron is 56. Not grab a mole. Copper is uh, 63. No? 63. Then we can say when 56 grams are dissociated, 56 gram of iron is dissociated, 63 gram of copper is deposited. So you got the, I think you got the point. Then, uh, then you can say when uh, one mole of iron is dissociated, one mole of copper is deposited. For so one mole of iron, one mole of iron, additional, additional eight gram of copper is deposited. So additional eight gram of copper is deposited. That means here you can see. Here you can see 2 gram difference. Here we can see 8 gram difference. So, and for 50, for 8 grams, we have to find uh, the mass of deposited copper. We have to find the copper mass. Okay, we have to find the copper mass. For 8 grams, you can see for 8 grams, it is it is 63. Okay, it is 63 or 64 actually. Okay, 64. For 8 grams of iron, 8 gram difference, 8 gram difference of iron, the mass is 64 grams of copper. Then, how much for 2 gram difference of iron? That is the answer. Answer is number. Uh, answer is number 2, it is 16 grams, it is 16 grams. 29, consider this compound, CH, OH, CCH3, NH2 and H, okay. Uh, incorrect about this compound, it is uh, insolubly Dilute HCA. Sorry, soluble in dilute HCL. Uh, dilute HCL is a strong acid. Due to the NH2 group, it can act as a base. So, uh, this compound can be dissolved in dilute HCL. That means the 
strong way strong as it yeah for a correct b uh, it has four optical isomers four optical isomers only two need there are two chiral carbons we can easily detect there are uh, two chiral carbons uh, here uh, when we consider this carbon one two three and four different groups are bound to this central carbon therefore it can be considered as a chiral carbon here also this carbon uh, is bound with four different groups therefore it is also a chiral carbon but when we consider in the optical isomerism you know there are one for one compound there are two uh, actually two structures d and l l d and d and l so for this carbon two isomers for this carbon two isomers totally it is four four optical isomers are there it reacts with ethanol chloride to form an amide ethanol chloride and form an amide yes how it is happening uh, here i Again. How it is happening? This is the compounding CH, C, CH3, NH2. This is the compound we add ethanol chloride. So, uh, after adding ethanol chloride, this uh, this group, so this group can react with both this, this one and this one. Here, this H and this H this chlorine uh, removes as a HCl molecule and again HCl molecule, therefore. A new the new product is carbon, this carbon and this hydrogen, this oxygen, and between this oxygen and this carbon, new bond is formed. CO CH3. Then this carbon CH3H uh, nitrogen, then uh, CO. Yes, those are the new bonds. Okay, so three correct. Uh, then what? It reacts with what alkaline nitrogen to uh, form benzoic acid. It should not alkaline. Alkaline K meno K meno It should not alkaline. It should acidic K meno Alkaline came in no for you is used. The product will be this one. Therefore, this is correct. Uh, it forms a disonium solvent HNO2. So, no. Actually, uh, even a disonium salt is produced, it is very unstable. So, it is actually an uh, aliphatic, aliphatic NH2 group. Here, you this NH2 group. When adding, adding uh, nitrous, it can to make a disonium. But it is very unstable because it is an aliphatic, not aromatic. And so, uh, when it is... Uh, when uh, nitrous is added, it produces what? P uh, in OH alcoholic group. So answer is number four and five, both four and five. Okay. Which of the following is not used for dehydration dehydration reactions? Answer is number five for uh, using in dehydration. Uh, reactions, the particular compound uh, should have ability to attract H2O molecules. So alcoholic KOH is not the answer, is the answer 
it, it is not used for dehydrogenation reactions. 31. Which of the following gives a precipitate when added to a saturated aqueous CSCL solution? Precipitate should be formed. First one, PDNO3, lead nitrate is added to CSCL, then happen. PDCL2, white color precipitate is occurred. Then ethanol. Ethanol and uh, sodium carbonate KR solution, no, no precipitates. A correct, C and D incorrect. Uh, what about ethanol? Initially, actually CSCL is a saturated, saturated Okay, CSCL is a saturated solution. That means it is saturated by CS plus ions and chloride ions. Saturated solution means the solute is solute is CSCL. Solvent is solvent is H2O. Okay, here initially it has uh, H2O as the solvent. H2O as the solvent. Then it says ethanol is added. When ethanol is added to this mixture, ethanol is added to this mixture, what happened? Ethanol create hydrogen bonds with H2O. Ethanol means CH3, CH2, OH. H2O has this structure. Therefore, uh, hydrogen bonds are created. New hydrogen bonds are created. Then ethanol is uh, dissolved in water. Then the solvent, the new solvent means H2O plus ethanol. Ethanol. Then initially uh, CSCL is dissolved in uh, H2O. Only H2O is there. H2O was there. Then, then after adding ethanol, then the solvent, solvent was H2O plus ethanol. Because uh, uh, actually, uh, after adding ethanol, the ethanol created hydrogen bonds intermolecular interactions with H2O. Therefore, at the final stage, we can we, we can compare, we can consider these uh, two compounds as the solvents. Here, CSCL is dissolving both H2O and ethanol. So, CSCL is a polar compound, ionic compound, polar compound. H2O is a polar compound, it's okay, but ethanol is a non-polar compound. Okay, non-polar compound. You know, polar solvents are, polar solvents are very dissolved in polar solute. Polar solutes are very dissolved in polar solvent, but not non-polar solvents. So, then what happened? The uh, solvent, the quality of the solvent is decreases than the initial stage because initially it had it had only H2O. The solvent is a polar. Then uh, after adding ethanol, the solution, actually quality of the solution decreases due to the presence of ethanol because ethanol is a non-polar uh, solvent. Then uh, after adding ethanol, the, dissol the dissolving of CSCL decreased, therefore, uh, some amount of CSCL is precipitated. Okay, not dissolved, not dissolved like initial state, therefore, the non dissolving portion of CSCL is precipitated. Therefore, by adding ethanol, they are, they are, uh, by ethanol, by adding ethanol, precipitate can be formed. It is the CSCL precipitate. A and B answer is number one. The concentration of an aqueous magnesium sulfate solution is 0 0.001. The correct statement or statement about the solutions. MgSO4 concentration is 0 
0, 0, 1 in MOL EM minus 3. Here we have to convert MOL EM minus 3 concentration into PPM. You know 1 PPM is equal to 1 mg EM minus 3. Concentration of aqueous MDSO for solution is 0.001 mol dm minus 3. We have to convert this concentration into ppm. So you have to know 1 ppm is equal to 1 mg dm minus 3. So uh, 1 in both cases, we consider 1 square decimeter volume. Therefore, the effect of the volume can be negligible. Here, we have to convert mole into milligram. For that, initially mole to gram and the next level gram to milligram. Okay, here MGSO for moles are 0 0.001. So we have to find number of MGSO4. MGSO4 uh, MGSO4 uh, concentration in milligrams actually. Uh, here 0 0.001 into uh, for converting uh, convert to a mass the mole should be multiplied by its molar mass its molar mass is 120 then uh, this is the gram this this, uh, this value is for gram then for converting gram to milligram we should multiply by thousand uh, it is 100 20 ppm. Therefore, A is incorrect, C is correct. Concentration of sulfate. Here you know MgSO4 moles. MgSO4 moles are 0.001. That means MgSO4 moles are 0.001. Therefore, SO4 moles. Of 0.001. Then uh, we have to find the SO4 2 minus concentration. O SO4 2 minus uh, gram mass in milligrams. Okay? Because in both cases we are considering one square decimeter volume. Uh, this mole should be converted to milligram in SO4 2 minus ions also. So what about the other mass 22 into 22 plus sorry 32 plus 16 into 40 it is 96 okay here 0 0.001 into 96 this is the gram this this mass is from gram therefore uh, converting gram to milligram it should multiply by thousand therefore SO4 so for 2 minus concentration is 96 ppm. B is correct. Concentration of Mg2 plus ions. Concentration of Mg2 plus ions. If Mg SO4 moles are 0.001. SO4 2 minus moles also 0.001. Mg2 plus ions also 0.001 moles. Therefore, we can. Find its mass in 